Hi, it's Craig, WJ6F. Did you just pass your tech test and now you're waiting on the FCC to send you that call sign? And in the meantime, you want to pick up a radio? Then keep watching. I'll show you some inexpensive radios to help get you started as well as a couple of antennas. And we'll get to it right after this. First radios I'm going to start with are going to be the HTs. Some of these are not in production anymore, but I will be showing you where you can buy radios on the used market. Some are going to be digital, some are analog, and some are going to be tri-band. Price range will be between about $25 up to around $200. First one I'm going to show you is the Baofeng GT3TP, which means tri-power. I'm going to put this on a meter and we'll check out how powerful it actually is. When I originally bought it, it was about 50 bucks, got two of them. Came with antennas, handheld mics, battery eliminator, and a programming cable. You can have the MFJ873 SWR watt meter set to 20 watts. And we'll be reading the second scale right here. I have the GT3TP right now set to national calling frequency 146.520. And it's reading just shy of five watts. Next I have this set for, uh, it's called Table Mountain. It's 447.200. And we're a little over, actually right about dead even on five watts. Next one up is the Radioity GS5B analog radio. It's a five watt radio, dual push to talk, Bluetooth programming, which is not offered on any other radio that I'll be showing you, and you can also charge it with a USB, as well as regular wall wart through the charging cradle. I do have a video that shows you how to fully program this radio. At the time of filming, it's going for $99.99. It also comes with a 2000 milliamp hour lithium battery. Some extra items you could pick up for it are handheld mics and extra batteries. One of the nice features about this is you can program it through Bluetooth via your Apple or Android phone. And it is IP56 rainproof. Okay, let's check out the Radioity GS5B. And on 146.5200 we're a little over 5. In fact, I think we're about 6 watts. Okay, I'm going to try one of the more local repeaters, the KD6 DDM. 440 machine and it's 445.760. That puts us right at 5 watts again. This is the Yaesu FT60 and is my first radio. It is a 2 meter 440 radio, does 5 watts, 1000 memories, wide band receive. At the time of filming it's going for 154.95 at Ham Radio Outlet. This is a tried and true radio, it's a real workhorse. Unfortunately, I've dropped it from a six-foot shelving unit, and it took the beating. And the FT60 on two meters. And we're getting about four and a half watts. And with the FT60 on the Simplex 440 frequency, we're right at four watts. Next one up is a tri-band radio from Wushong. It's the KGUV8E, purchased at buy2wayradios.com. The version I got was the accessory kit, comes with programming cable, extra batteries, battery eliminator, auto charging cable, as well as a handheld mic. That one costs $169.99. You can buy just the radio itself for $139.99. This is a 2 meter, 440, and 220 radio. Okay, and for the KGUV8E, we're going to be using the bottom national call again. And we're at about 6 watts. And again on 440. And we're right at 5 watts again. Here we have the Yaesu FT70DR. It's their no frills digital radio. 2 meter, 440, C4 FM, 5 watt handheld. At the time of filming, it goes for $174.95 at HRO. Okay, and on the FT70, again, with the national calling frequency. And we're at 6 watts. And on 440. 
This one were about four watts. This is the most expensive radio on the list. It's the Anytone AT878 UV Plus Bluetooth, which at the time of filming goes for $238.99. It's from Bridgecom Systems. It can be found either on their website or on their Amazon page. It comes with a 3100 milliamp hour battery. It is a DMR radio, dual band, two meter, 440. It is in my opinion, one of the best DMR radios to be had at this time. It also comes with a Bluetooth push to talk button for remote use and is also a five watt radio. This is the Yaesu FT2980. It's an 80 watt radio, but it's only two meters. It goes for $149.95 at the time of filming from HRO. It's extremely easy to program, easy to use, does not have a fan. It's a giant heat sink, basically. The power steps for this are 5, 10, 30, and 80 watts. Has 200 memory channels and can transmit on 144 to 148 megahertz and receive 136 to 174 megahertz. The first thing I suggest doing when you get an HT is get a better antenna. They all come with these uh, rubber ducts, which one of the common jokes out there that it's nothing more than a dummy load. I have a few of the extra HT antennas I've purchased First one we have up here, this antenna is by the company Abri. You get them on Amazon. This one is a 28.3 inch, folds in half. I purchased it in an SMA female. And you can get these antennas in either 18.8 inch for $13.50, the 28.3 inch for $15.49, or 42.5 inches for $20.99 from Amazon. The next one up is a diamond antenna. This one's really good for backpacking. It's 70 centimeters long, weighs 45 grams. It's a two meter 440 antenna, it comes in the two pieces. Now they say on the website that it has a gain on two meters of 2.15 dBi and on 70 centimeters, a 4.5 gain dBi. The next two up, these have become my favorite antennas. They're made by Signal Stuff. The top one is BNC and the bottom one is SMA male. You can also get SMA female. And they actually come in assorted colors, including you can have the whole antenna glow in the dark. As of right now, it came with just the two ends glowing in the dark. Depending on how you order them, they can go between $20 and $26.50. The next one up is another diamond antenna. I've had this one for quite a while. It's what I use on my FT60. It's the SRH77CA. As far as diamond antennas go, this one has been an excellent antenna. It's a 15 inch antenna, two meter, 440. It's right now it's SMA male, but you can get it in a BNC. The next one up is the Nagoya NA771. It's a VHF UHF antenna. You can find them on Amazon, but you gotta watch out for counterfeits and you can get it in either SMA female, male or BNC. And they say that it has a 2.15 dBi gain. Next one I have here is the Diamond RH77CA, two meter 440 antenna, 15 inches tall. This one is in B and C. At HRO, you can pick them up for $22.95. And the last one here from Diamond as well, the RH707, two meter 440 antenna. It's eight and a quarter inches, but it has a fold over feature. And at HRO, it is currently going for $29.95. And it, uh, has been a really great antenna. This antenna is a BNC, and according to the Diamond website, it has a 3 dB gain. Now, if you wish to use your HT as more of a base radio, then I highly recommend from Ed Fong, is the DBJ2 dual band roll-up antenna kit. It's two meter, 440, and it includes adapters for BNC, SMA, and SMA female, and a six foot extension. I went ahead and bought a couple more extensions just in case. And with everything you see here, it's around $40. It can handle up to 50 watts. A great inexpensive antenna if you want to turn your mobile radio into more of a base station is the N9 TAX dual band 2 meter 440 Slim Jim antenna. You can get it with either a 10 foot cable or a 16 foot cable. It's a $2 difference. It can handle up to 100 watts. They use RG58 cabling along with the ladder line. And on the cable, there's already a ferrite choke ballon installed. Next antenna we have here, if you're looking at getting into satellites or you're looking at needing an antenna that'll hit a hard to reach repeater, then check out the Elk 2 meter 440 L5 Bravo Bravo. It's a two meter 440 five element dual band log periodic antenna. 
On 2 meter, you have a gain of 6.6 .6 dB, 8.7 dBi. On 440, you have a gain of 7 dB, 9 dBi. It has a 20 plus dB front to back ratio, 24 inch boom length, 1 to 1 SWR on 144 and 440. 200 watt max on 2 meters and 100 watt max on 440 and weighs 1.4 pounds. The one I have here has the black powder coating. You can also get it without the powder coating. You can get it in UHF connector or in connector. The cost for it as I have it set up is $154.95 from the Elk website. You can also get these at HRO. In addition to the radios and antennas, there's a couple of items that are pretty important to have. One is an SWR watt meter. So you know exactly how much wattage you're putting out and also to make sure that your antennas are set up properly. The next item is a dummy load, similar to this 300 watt one. It's always good to have a dummy load. Test your antennas and your equipment before you try and get on the air. That way you're not interfering with anybody's QSOs. To try and help a new technician along the way, I'm giving away this MFJ 842 VHF UHF SWR watt meter. It covers 140 to 525 megahertz and can handle up to 150 watts average. It's a cross needle design. If you're interested in trying to win this, what I need you to do is in the comments section, please put down, I need this along with your call sign. That way I can verify that you are a legit ham. And then in about a month from now, I'll do a drawing and we'll see who wins this. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comments section below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a video. If you'd like to help support the channel, there's a Patreon link in the description area. And while you're here, check out one of these other videos. And thanks again for watching.